I'd like to talk to you about a project, an ongoing project for a number of years involving uh, creating virtual simulation games to enhance student engagement in nursing education. So just to give you some background, uh, virtual simulation games are uh, often referred to as serious games and they're games that are accessed uh, by computer or digital device. And the games are, the purpose of the games are to educate and not just to entertain. But that being said, the entertaining aspects of a game uh, increase the engagement for the learner. The thing that I really like about virtual simulation games in nursing, we have students run through live simulations where they practice patient care and interactions with other healthcare providers. However, we, due to limits of faculty, we often have students participating in groups of 10, and usually half of them are interacting with the, uh, what we call the, the standardized patient or with the simulator at a time. And what happens is the students that are more confident are the ones that step forward and make the decisions in the, in the clinical situation and the others hang back. Um, but when you have a virtual simulation where the student is uh, playing it by themselves, they have to step up and make the decisions and they're more comfortable because they don't have someone watching them um, and if they make a mistake. Some other advantages to the virtual simulation games is that they're accessible anywhere, anytime, that you have a, a, an internet connection. The students can repeat them as many times as they like. They can go down, they can select the incorrect answers and get immediate feedback as to why those are incorrect or not the best responses. And when they pick the correct answer, the, the game will proceed. Marianne, are you using slides? Oh no, you can't see them? No. Okay, no. I hit share. Uh, there's an extra thing you have to hit. Okay, thank you for telling me. <laughs> okay. Now I just got to get my slides back. Sorry, okay. but thank you. Um, so, similar to live simulations, virtual simulation games have been found to increase knowledge, um, satisfaction, self efficacy, and other uh, learning outcomes. And so they, they are valuable, but they are something that is a little bit newer and has not been traditionally used in nursing education. We got into uh, virtual simulation games. And, and when I say we, um, I'm the co-president of the Canadian Alliance of Nurse Educators Using Simulation, which grew out of uh, an organization in Ontario called the Ontario Simulation Alliance. And so we were a group of nurse educators that came together originally to create live simulations and then um, ended up um, focusing on virtual simulations. And, and the reason for this was that we found our students were coming to their live simulations and they weren't prepared. And so we thought that a, a game might be a better way to prepare them than doing readings and, and other things that we know they don't like to do. And so one of the ways you can use a virtual simulation game um, we've demonstrated is to prepare for a live simulation. We can also use them to replace a full simulation. And again, the advantages are, to that are the cost effectiveness, um, although you still do need to debrief the, the simulation. We can use them to teach clinical skills. We can use them in the classroom as in, perhaps with a classroom response system. And we can use them to either supplement or replace classroom time, simulation time, and uh, even clinical teaching. So, so the issue for nursing is that there, there are a number of commercial virtual simulations uh, and different products that are available. However, they are expensive. The licenses are expensive and the expense is usually passed on to the students. And we know they don't they can't afford textbooks, so they, they can't afford these licenses. And then uh, to develop uh, virtual simulation games traditionally was time consuming and costly and you would have your video, video team and IT support and all of that. And so what we did we, was we proposed to develop a user-friendly cost-effective way to develop our own virtual simulation games. And so we decided on video-based versus avatar-based. 
um, and they're based on learning outcomes. And what we simply did was film a video clip of a clinical situation in the lab using a GoPro camera. So the student would see this video clip, which is filmed from the perspective of the nurse and literally puts them into the nurse's shoes. And so they would then uh, have to select one of three potential nursing actions as the next, uh, the next step. And then they would uh, receive immediate feedback following that selection of whether or not it was correct or incorrect and what was the rationale for that. So that, that first uh, study that we did uh, demonstrated that it was both feasible and cost-effective for nurse educators to develop their own uh, virtual simulation games. And our evaluation showed that they were rated highly by both the educators and the students using them in terms of usability, engagement, and learning. And the students that prepared for a live simulation using the game were rated it more significantly higher than those that uh, prepared using a case study. So this was before COVID. And so very few were using these virtual simulation games. However, as a result of the pandemic, there was a, a need to move nursing courses online across the province and across Canada and globally. And so the, the simulation organizations issued a joint statement on the use of virtual simulation during uh, the pandemic, supporting the use uh, as replacement for clinical hours for health professional students. And indeed, uh, simulations were being used to replace uh, clinical. So our response to this was that uh, we had already developed a repository of virtual simulation games that were available to our members that had contributed or helped make the games. And so we released these uh, open access for all nurse educators across Canada and, and, and beyond. And uh, the, we collaborated with the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing to disseminate uh, this, this, this uh, information. And immediately they wanted to collaborate with us to create a, a virtual simulation game about COVID-19 assessment and PPE because it was much needed. And so this is a game we created. It is available open access on the CanSim uh, website. After that, it was uh, because of the success of that project that we actually did that with no funding it, within two weeks, we had the game up on the website and then we had it translated and put on the website. And then after that, uh, along with Causen, we were able to get some funding from Health Canada to create more virtual simulation games related to caring for COVID-19 patients. And so we brought in, uh, we recruited a team of, uh, of uh, subject matter experts who were um, experts in uh, critical care, emergency nursing to help us design the games. We use the CanSim design process, which is uh, starts with the learning outcomes and competency indicators. Then we create a decision point map with all of the, the questions and the responses. And then we use that to write the filming script. And then we send it for peer review so that we're not uh, making any mistakes. The games were filmed in the simulation labs at Queens and Algonquin College. And there were some challenges. Um, we did film in accordance with uh, COVID-19 regulations. And then we assembled the game using our CanSim template, which is Articulate uh, Storyline 3 software. And we didn't want to film the French ones live because it would involve going back into the lab. And so instead we recorded the French voices over uh, Zoom and dubbed them over the English voices. So this is our open access website with all of the COVID-19 virtual simulation games that were created. And this is the French uh, version of the website. Every game that we created has a case summary, uh, a set of learning outcomes, a self-assessment rubric, a link to the game, some information about debriefing virtually and some self-reflective questions. So this is an example of some of the clips from the, uh, co the first COVID game and in which we role model the correct procedures for putting on the PPE, taking it off and even uh, collecting a, a COVID sample. Then we got some extra money uh, to create a, a mental health game related to suicide ideation, uh, related to a student during COVID who was had depressive symptoms that was progressing to suicidal ideation. 
Our games have been accessed over 1 million times since September. The original game was ac has been accessed over 2.5 million games since last uh, March. There was a brief user survey embedded in the, the VSGs. And so this demonstrated that the users um, found that it did help increase their knowledge related to PPE. It helped them feel more prepared to uh, providing nursing care and that the information was clear and easy to understand in the games. In terms of impact, there's been a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence from nurse educators across Canada uh, telling us that they were using the games to replace in-person simulations and clinical hours. And many schools were requiring them to use the COVID games prior to going to clinical. And we were uh, delighted to receive a, an award from Coupon um, for our contribution to nursing education as a result.